Oh, okay, okay. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, Shom's Outline Series uh, book on quantum mechanics. So here it is right here. And we're just going to look at one little page. This will be one of my shortest uh, lectures ever. And um, that page is um, uh, right here, page uh, 22. Um, uh, here's, uh, here's, uh, Schrodinger's, uh, 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 equation, of course. And we'll notice that the partial with respect to time is only one derivative. Uh, this del squared means the partial with respect to space, x, y, and z, uh, is two derivatives here. But time is only one derivative. And here's a, a little note that's kind of very interesting. It says here, the Schrodinger equation is a first order equation with respect to time, meaning it's uh, one derivative um, uh, with respect to time, as I've already shown you. Uh, therefore, the state at any time at time t equals zero, or t zero, uh, determines its subsequent state at all times. Uh, and that's what's kind of interesting. The state at time t zero determines the subsequent state at all times. Um, that pretty much uh, uh, confirms that uh, Schrodinger's equation is a deterministic equation. In other words, a state, uh, a state, um, uh, a previous state uh, defines uh, a later state, um, and uh, uh, this is uh, a lot of people uh, wonder or uh, sometimes try to falsely claim that Schrodinger's equation. Um, uh, brings up uh, uh, non-linear behavior, and it does, of course, if there's three or more particles. But if we take a simplistic uh, approach, um, it brings up that again, as, as because it's a, a first-order time derivative. There's only one derivative with respect to time. Um, at time t zero, uh, uh, this determines every other state that uh, that the the particle can be in uh, at all times. So just wanted to show you the deterministic nature of Schrodinger's equation, and um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much for watching.